Welcome to Full Metal RPG, the, sh the tabletop role-playing game show that still is looking for that rare copy of Shadowrun 1st Edition that cares about class. I'm Richie Buzzkill, and today I have Nolan with me, as usual. What's up, what Nolan? And we have a special guest. We have Stu Horvath from Vintage RPG fame. What's up, Hello. Stu? Hello. Uh, nothing. It's Sunday morning. I'm I'm chilling. Oh yeah. Well, you you have such a it, it, it the camera has now started to work again. <laughs> so it, check out the YouTube show if you want to see the Stu's excellent uh uh record player and his wife's uh jade uh plant growing in the background. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a very zen look. It could be a uh trip hop uh uh. Uh, YouTube loop for 10 hours. So <laughs> I like it. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I'm not even, uh, I'm about a third of my way through my first cup of coffee. So forgive me if I seem slow or stupid. Yeah. Coffee is definitely the beverage of choice as opposed to the beer. <laughs> we usually do these in the middle of the night. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. I, I already consumed my first cup of tea. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, keep some energy up. Because it's way earlier for me than it is for any of you. Because I'm in Arizona. The only uh, sane thing about it is no daylight savings time. Oh gosh! So are you two, two three hours ahead? Two hours ahead? Uh, two, three. Behind? Three. Yeah. So it is seven eleven in the morning, everybody. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I'm just going to do traffic on the tens. So I just did traffic already. Um. <laughs> Uh, so Stu, you are, I think, most famous for well, two things. One for playing out your Instagram, a, Instagram, uh, a decade in advance, and <laughs> uh, having a amazing collection of RPGs. Why, thank you. Um, it's not a deck. Oh man, you want to talk about Instagram? <laughs> yeah. Jeez, I'm so angry with Instagram right now. It's oh, just please, like so... please bring it, bring the Instagram heat. <laughs> it's so broken, and like last year, it was it broke and it stopped showing my stuff. I, you know, it, like I have like a, a large number of followers, and it's nice, and they used to engage, and, and now they don't because they don't see my stuff. Um, and like like that engagement was basically like cut to a fraction last year and i got used to it i was like who cares about the likes it doesn't matter but now i'm getting like all of a sudden at the same time you know april um like no engagement like i was posting dungeons and dragons stuff and getting like no engagement i'm what? just like wh why am i doing this like i just i just wanted people to read the thing yeah and it just won't it it's just it won't cooperate it's a video platform now it's awful well i mean that's yeah it's mostly short form video but it's also like it i mean Let's be honest, Full Metal RPG has been sort of shadow banned from Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> most other places for our random uh, takes being put placed up. So, you know, get social media is a hellscape and, you know, they get you hooked in and then they want you to engage and then then no one engages. And it sort of like feels like this, like, ah, why am I doing? <laughs> I feel like I'm petitioning like invisible spirits and like like changing my behavior in ways that I hope you know like like in magical thinking will like appease the god algorithm and it's it's stupid <laughs> it's just like like they 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 tease you by having like this big number of followers but then they 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 just halt they keep you in social media prison it's it's crazy well, I mean, we we did. I did sort of break on YouTube the last video, sort of broken out in the algorithm, mostly because of the clickbait title <laughs> I put on it, and that was that was the only thing that's like has ever burst into the the you know more than a couple more than a hundred views was like because I put a hey so D D is being ruined by lore everybody hey look at me I'm playing the game <laughs> oh I don't want to play like this game. Playing the game, it's terrible because it's just so disingenuous. Either either you believe that Drek and like you have to talk to it in, in sincerity, or you know you have to use that as like as the hook, and then then you could be your real self and 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 put together your your put out your real ideas. And neither of those things appeals to me at all. So 
I don't know. I'm looking at newsletters and stuff. We might <laughs> the, the the joke about the the I mean I I it's nice that I have it all planned out and I have like that that really long runway to uh to kind of fiddle with the the system, but uh the Instagram might be dialing back. Yes. And and the, that's unfortunate, but a news everyone has told me that in the newsletter is the way to go because at least the email algorithms don't change as often as everything else but mm-hmm. uh, i'm too lazy to actually write anything and i like to <laughs> improvise this show so as you know <laughs> knowing how much uh, notes i gave you which is not <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh the i mean the 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 Instagram comes from you ha- having this love for RPGs and collecting a lot of RPGs, which is collecting RPGs is sort of what we're gonna talk about today, this morning. Um, so I want to ask both all of us: How did you start collecting? I start with Stu because we're on Stu. How did you start collecting RPGs? What did what sparked that uh, that that collection started? So, so even, even back in like when I was a kid, like I was interested in them broadly and, uh, would find something like Call of Cthulhu and, and, and would just want as much of it as possible to read and, and, and appreciate the art in. Um, so in a certain way, I've always been kind of a collector, but, um, I found much more terrible ways to do it, uh, because of the internet, uh, th- there was just, I, I was like poking around one day looking to replace something that I had sold or, or got lost in a flood. And uh, I found all this stuff that I just didn't know existed, primarily Chaosium box sets. And I was just like, well, I need all of those. I just, I just do. <laughs> like my life is, I thought my life was full and complete, but it isn't any longer. And uh, it won't be until I get those boxes. Uh, so I did, I got all those boxes. And then I just kept going. I was just like, well, I really like Chaosium, so I'm just going to get everything that they they produced because that's a rational thing to do. Um, well, you've got to have all the tools for the toolbox, right? you got to have every <laughs> single, every single, no matter how big or small, piece of their the, the toolbox so you can run uh, the com- perfect Call of Cthulhu game. Uh, <laughs> and, or... <laughs> The best part, like I, I, and I don't even use rules really. Like, like, like uh, we use the framework in Call of Cthulhu game, but like, like when combat happens, I'm just, I'm on the fly every single time. Like, we, like rules. <laughs> what do we use those for? Um, yeah, and it, it basically just started like that. Once, once, once I realized what was out there, um, I also got around the same time I was buying the Call of Cthulhu stuff up. Uh, I got a random. I don't know if I bought a small collection or somebody was like leaving it on their porch because they were moving and it was just like a random box of RPG books, but they were so odd. Like there was all stars of wrestling was in there. Um, the, uh, the Diablo D and D, uh, version was in there. And I was just like, this is so delightfully stupid. Like, th- is there more of this? And then, then I found, you know, all the, weird licensed stuff from the nineties. And then it just, it was just an exponential thing. The more I, the more I looked, the more I found things that were worth, uh, hunting down and checking out. Uh, and now I have far, far too many things. Uh, Nolan, how did you start, uh, collecting again? Um, in some sense, I was collecting since I started role playing. Like every time we play something, I keep the book. And you know, I had a medium collection, right? Anytime one of my friends would say, "Hey, let's let's play White Wolf," whatever, I'd get a couple White Wolf books and make sure I had what I needed to play, right? And so it's, things built up slowly over the years uh, that way. And then, kind of during the pandemic era, I kind of got into uh, D and D history read like all the, uh, John Peterson books and also kind of, you know, you can't go out, see a show or anything. So I also kind of, eh, what's look at all these, oh, there's this Arcanum thing. There's all these kind of old books and stuff I could maybe have like, uh, eh, maybe I'll pick up one or two here. And, you know, all of a sudden I've got a, a small collection here of things that I didn't really play. Cause for the longest time, you know, my collection was literally just everything I had actually played because i usually Mm -hmm. didn't think it was worth investing in something if one of my friends wasn't going to run it uh so i've i I have somewhat larger percentage of my games on my shelf here actually played than maybe other people but 
uh, yeah, I guess that's how I started. And I, I don't know, maybe is this a intervention? Do I have to admit that I have a problem? <laughs> no, <laughs> not if I'm here. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Stu's collection and know why you're not the intervention in this particular. <laughs> um, I, I kind of, I think I, it, and and to some extent, I think Nolan has the same thing. Is my family has a bit of a collector problem in the fact that I would call my father a high functioning hoarder mm. in the fact that he actually uses, he actually collects things. And then a portion of his collection, he actually makes money from, which is he collects big metal objects and then makes, he's a machinist and welder and he makes things out of the, some of the metal objects that he collects. <laughs> and so I have to prevent myself from basically papering every wall in this uh in this house with rpg books and and uh but really it's it start for me it started with uh the two games that i love loved from the 90s that i played a lot which was cyberpunk 2020 and west end star wars West and Star Wars being the first game I ever played. So of course I need I needed to pick up every time I saw one, I would pick it up. Fortunately, I haven't gotten into looking online for uh things that I may or may not need. And uh I only have a spreadsheet for the uh <laughs> Cyberpunk 2020 stuff because I kept buying doubles. Uh, so. <laughs> it's a curse. Well, I'm I'm just happy to learn that your family like uses the stuff they hoard <laughs> yeah that's uh that that is it is an upside of it we we have to be functional it has to have some function unfortunately i you know as people watching the video can see this is this is part of my collection some of it's in the closet some of it's in the hallway but like <laughs> it anyways that i i uh I need, I you know, the, all the books are now stacked on top of other books, so mm. it's probably time to start uh, calling a little bit, and that's a uh, that's that's a painful subject for later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I so, uh, Stu, you uh, you have like a, do you have a philosophy? Or are you just kind of like I want everything? Um, I used to sort of, it, it's changed over time. Like, like, like I, I was, I was very much into the Call of Cthulhu, the Chaosium stuff, because I really genuinely like their products. They're just on my wavelength. And I have a lot of D&D &D stuff because that was, you know, everybody has a lot of D&D &D stuff. Like it's in, in, inescapable. Um, but like, I, it changes. My focus changes. Like I had an opportunity to buy basically every Traveler book uh, a couple years ago and I leapt at it because I love Traveler. And now I'm in the process of deciding how much of that I want to keep, which is not that much. Like, like, not because it's bad, just because, like, you know, space concerns and stuff. So um, my philosophy early on was to sort of be a single copy uh, repository, uh, like, like to let that be like, like you just get one copy of everything that you're interested in. And you kind of use that as like an archive to make sense for the book. Uh, now that the book's out... Uh, a lot of stuff just doesn't seem as important uh, to keep anymore. So I'm in, in, in the process of trying to figure out what, what to get rid of. Um, and, 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 and this is sort of what shocked me into actually, uh, uh, you know, reaching out is like the, the, you know, having a big collection and then pulling it down <laughs> is, is a, that's a whole, that's a whole, like I've done it every time I've moved. Because I, I I rented for a long time and now I've bought, but I I'm thinking about moving again. <laughs> it, it, you know this 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 is a lot of weight. These books are not light, <laughs> mm. and I'm getting old. So <laughs> the key to books is you got to put them in small boxes or or bags. Um, don't I'm like a banker box. That's usually my. Uh, unit of measure is a banker box like the the storage unit and and my magazines are all in banker box banker boxes and they're uh they are they are sort of the perfect amount of weight and size yeah, and they stack filled nice. completely with paper there <laughs> yeah um so yeah i usually like 
and and my more modern collection is all these indie rpgs that i i love the i love the strange and the weird rpg so and that's that's why i do this show um and so that's it, it's, it gets even more interesting because those books are half size so, <laughs> so it's like well a full banker box of those and then you gotta like turn them sideways anyways <laughs> it's like tetris yeah you, you gotta try and maximize what's in the box um but yeah i, I and and now these bookstores no longer take uh my weird books so i've gotten so esoteric they don't care uh, really Jeez. Yeah. yeah the the local book bookstores uh don't want like half of the books i take to them wow see I wish I wish you could just ship them this way, because like like you said that you're not on the Internet looking for stuff. If I wasn't on the Internet looking for stuff, I wouldn't be able to find anything. There's just not the and that's true of like like records and regular books too. this area is just so picked over because of the proximity of New York, I think that like everything kind of just goes into the city um, and then gets priced high. So like there isn't a really good secondhand market uh, in Jersey uh, like I like. But I, I visited a friend in Pittsburgh and they had like all these half price bookstores. And I was just like, this is great. You know, all this stuff that like, like, like was just around. Uh, but it's, it's, it, they're just, there aren't even stores for it really. There's not a, not a ton of, uh, secondhand bookstores even. Uh, it really stinks. <laughs> so if, if Arizona has a whole bunch, good for, good for Arizona. That's two good things. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two good things. We, we, we have a uh, bookman's and zia records they both have uh bookman's has a much larger uh rpg section and it it used to be this like shangri-la mm -hmm. where you could go and find really weird stuff for um for very little money like they they would just price it like oh it's 10 12 dollars or whatever then they found ebay <laughs> yeah and now we'll post things on at basically ebay prices uh uh for things that have sold on ebay which at least it's the stuff that's sold and not just the speculators on ebay yeah but um, even still like like there's so much having bought and sold so much of this stuff like ebay is ridiculous oh it is. i like it when i can get an ebay price out of somebody but i don't usually try and do that well yeah if you're you're trying to sell and they, it sells for that price. And you're like, Oh, I should have asked for more money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's it, it, it. And then we, yeah. So yeah, there, there is this kind of like cycle in a collection, right? You get, you kind of gets big and then you're like, well, I now can't walk around in here, <laughs> which I've, I've definitely had where I've had stacks of books you know my microphone is hiding more stacks of books over here <laughs> um <laughs> uh so i guess it's an intervention for me and not Stu. i don't <laughs> well i mean i i've always been so i aside of the the couple books that i have on my desk for for my ongoing games i don't have any role-playing games in the house it's all in the garage slash the clubhouse um and or uh the the six boxes that are left in the storage space that's used for other stuff it's not just role playing games um so i've always been really <laughs> one of my constraints has always been like it can't it can't spill over like it can't like it's always got to be on shelves or neatly put away um because that way lies madness um so my wife is uh my wife daisy is a librarian and uh she like over the course of our relationship, I've I've really come to appreciate the need for a library to be weeded, um, and like initially, you know, like I, weeding like the idea of like libraries throwing away books, like like it hurts me because like some of the books that I loved at my, you know, my childhood library met that fate, and that stinks because they're really expensive on eBay now, but the by weeding. You you give just like with a garden, you give your your books, your collection, you know, space to grow, and 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 you get to kind of re redirect it, repurpose it, and and make sure that everything is that you're just not getting everything for the sake of getting everything. Um, 
you know, you get a little bit of money for selling it off and, and you have new space on the shelf and you, you can fill it with new things. Um, as long as you don't like immediately go back and buy what you just sold because you miss it so much, you gotta be smart about it. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm in this is because I sold off all of my burp stuff, middle earth role playing stuff way back when, and to noble Knight, And, uh, like 10 years later, I was just like, that was a very stupid decision. Uh, and now I have it all back at increased prices and that hurt a little bit, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, but yeah, it, by weeding and and like I've I've started weeding my collection, it it immediately opened up uh space for new cool things, like more merp actually. Uh, I I keep somebody on our Discord bought a merp uh module and I was jealous because it's one I didn't have, so I went and bought it. And then now every time when 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 one arrives, I go on eBay and I look for like the cheapest one to see if it's like cheap enough to buy. So I'm in like this weird cycle of buying merp but yeah i mean like i when i go through i'll be like and they're they're you know there are there are sacred parts of the collection that don't get weeded mm -hmm. and then and then i think it 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 mostly ends up in so, a lot of the to me i start weeding it starts getting into some of the newer stuff or a lot of the kickstarter stuff because i do think that you know that was that was a real that was a real boon to the size of my collection <laughs> <laughs> was when, when Kickstarter started and then there's, it's this not, it's hard to have a connection to a game when you buy it f five years before it shows up. Mm -hmm. You're like, Oh, Oh yeah. I bought this. Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, I'll put that on the shelf. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, Nolan, have you have you done any had to do any weeding, or you, your collection is still small enough that you're, it's, you're sort of it's still small enough to fit on like a shelf and a half. I mean, a, an IKEA shelf a whole unit and a half, right? So it's not. I don't have an enormous uh, collection, but yeah, I haven't done much. Uh, weeding yet, and maybe that's somewhat due to kind of the way my uh, my collecting has gone over the years, right? Like, there's like, you know, there's a, you know, Vampire the Masquerade book here that you know it's it's a memento of that time in high school we would play like Vampire. Like, I haven't played Vampire fucking ever, but it's like it's kind of this little memento of a moment in time. And I have a hard time like. Uh, you know, the fun we had and that I have a hard time like tossing those and you know it's like mm. right. You you still got quite a precious collection because you your your current collecting is is in the classic D D seventies, eighties well, era, right? Yeah, I, I I collected a lot of the early D D stuff, just you know, like like Stu said, you know, single copy, like just you know, I'm not looking to get the world's perfect copy, but I do like to go back and read like you know, I only started playing D D in like ninety two or so. Uh, so I do like to go back and look like what D and D was before second edition when I really, uh, started in, you know, I was interested in the history of it. And so I just picked up some of those, but as far as my collecting philosophy, right. I've kind of adopted more of a, uh, and this is going to send sound pretentious as fuck. Uh, like uh, I We're talking uh, about collecting. So pretension exactly. already went right out the window. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but I like to like collect, like what I consider like games that were like influential on game design. Right. Like, uh, you know, like the original, like apocalypse world, like games that kind of change things, you know, got a copy of like Amber Diceless. Look, mm -hmm. somebody came up with the idea that like, Oh, you can, you know, do games without dice, you know, like all these kinds of, I like games that have kind of like, you know, where, where new ideas came into the, into the system, you know, I got, you know, the old, uh, Ghostbusters game was great, you know, cause like led to like Western star Wars and then the kind of first dice pool system. Like there's all these, uh, kind of cool things that influenced future game design or were just a cool, crazy idea that someone wanted to like, uh, inject in the world. And of course, so I also have a number of, you know, you know, a number of books, like RBK said, from like the indie scene, right? The kind of like half size little things that came out of the forge and all that. 
uh, back in the day and are still being uh, produced to some good effect, right? Uh, yeah, so that's kind of been my philosophy and what I've been trying to collect is things that are historically interesting, like, you know, all the old, old, old D&D stuff is, of course, also very, very, very tremendously influential on, right, game design, right? Totally. It started the whole thing, right? Now, this is, this is, I definitely share this, like, like, like part of the early days, like when I discovered the Ghostbusters game and saw how, like, crucial that was to all of the 90s, like, I think that that was maybe the point. Which was early. That was that, that was after I was the the feed started. It was sometime in 2017, but it was uh uh. Th but that was maybe maybe the moment that I knew that I was going to write a book about this, just because like like it was so like holy crap! Like you could really chart mechanically how this thing like influenced everything that came after it for a while. It like totally dominated the 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 market. And yeah, and it's by a murderer's row of <laughs> amazing designers. You know? It's crazy. And and yeah, that and Star Wars comes right out of it. And then, you know, White Wolf and like like everything. It's 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 just wild. Um I also wanted to say uh that oh crap, what did I want to say? Uh, I lost it. I guess I didn't want to say it. All right, fair enough. Um <laughs> well, I, I guess and Nolan kind of mentioned it. Does collect does and this is a collector classic collectors uh, conundrum, and I think this is an interesting question for RPGs. Is does condition matter? Because for mo for the most part, like if I see a book that is like well loved, an RPG book that is like well like broken in, like I'm way more interested in that book than I am about a uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, the preciously perfect version of whatever I'm, you know, like if I'm interested, I'm going to buy it. Right. But like, if, if you give me a choice between a perfect copy and a well-loved copy, I'm almost going to be more interested in the well-loved copy than I am with the perfect copy. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I, 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 there's collectors who specialize in unopened, product and i don't understand them it's like having buying toys and keeping them in the package it's like it's a toy even if you're not going to play with it it should be out you should pose it um you should like these things they're tools that we use uh and and if you if you're buying up tools if you collect tools you want the ones that that are tried and true right like, like the one that a carpenter used for 50 years and built houses with instead of like the brand new one from home depot because everybody could own that one right um I have this one book. It, it's just, it was, <laughs> this just happened recently. Uh, my, um, my first edition of snake pipe hollow has a big black Sharpie on the front cover. Calvan, the sinister, like the guy who wrote it, just wrote his like DM name on it. And, and it's in the book. And like, like, because it's my copy, like that's, that's so my copy. And, I, and, <laughs> and, and, and the name is so great. And it like speaks to an earlier era and like, 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 you know, a, a complete lack of preciousness about the actual book. Um, and he's long been a mystery, but somebody reviewed the book and was just like, I love Calvin the Sinister. That's that's such a great name. And it reminded me. So I, I started looking around again and I actually found him on a Facebook thing. He's still and using he, the same name. <laughs> yeah. Well, so like, Because still... if you have that good a name, you're going to use it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a Bay Area guy. And, and like, it was just like, like now suddenly I'm, my, I'm connected to this guy and like the history of like he knew Dave Hargrave and like like apprenticed under him a little bit did some uh, play testing for Chaosia back in the day and it's just like 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 it's part like these are tools that were used and 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 it's cool to to be able and it's a, it's such a small pool of people that are are using these tools that you can find these connections and I I think that's super important um, as long as it's extent like you know, it's not missing pages and like, there aren't so many notes and highlights that it's impossible to read. I think that like the more used, the better it's cheaper too. <laughs> well, yeah. Nolan, what do you, what do you generally go for? Yeah, I agree completely. Like I love finding <laughs> people's names in the front of books and, you know, yeah. uh, when I get, you know, I was putting together, you know, my Beck me boxes, right. And, uh, the different colored, uh, boxes for the old Dean Beck me set. Uh, and yeah, I was getting them with, you know, blown out corners and I'm like, eh, I'll put a little glue in, you know? Yeah. A little, little you know, tape. 
a little archival tape, repair, do a little repair myself. Like, yeah, I, you know, it, it wasn't a precious, precious thing. You know, I'm not going to make an invisible repair at it and try and sell it back to somebody. You know, like it's for me, right? It's like, <laughs> I guess somebody will sell it when I die, but like, um, but I'm not going to make the other treasure to me is finding a character sheet or mm -hmm. five. Ooh, yeah. It's filled out with somebody's name, with somebody's character is in the book. That is like choice. There's some, <laughs> there's some people that will auction and buy. Like I found, you know, I dig through this old D and D stuff and I found, you know, pages of, you know, grid paper with maps and some guy's campaign from 1982. Does anybody want to bid on <laughs> crazy <laughs> early D and D notes that are just like, I, I've seen these things go by on groups and people are like oh yeah, i'll bid on that like weird <laughs> so i've i've been doing this i've been collecting like like seriously for about seven or eight years and i have i have accumulated so much of that stuff that it fills an entire banker box like character sheets and like campaign notes awesome. that have just been like like mixed in with stuff and it's so awesome it, it like it is it is a box of pure joy <laughs> uh and and i i always forget i don't know what to do with it because like it doesn't I don't know. Like I have to, I, it, I honestly getting off of Instagram might be great because like it, it'll kind of free uh, what I think that I could do uh, with the stuff that I have, because you know, you can't just post notes like that on Instagram because Instagram will just not care. It, uh, so like, like, like the, a lot of times Instagram has dictated what I collect. And now that, and once it's on the Instagram, I, I can get rid of it, uh, which goes back to the culling thing. Uh, but I'm rambling. Uh, well, so like, I mean, and you're the, you're the published author. So here's, here's an idea for you. Uh, <laughs> you could take those, those, no, the campaign stuff and the kind of like the esoterica you find the, the, in the liner and, and kind of make something out of it. Like I could even see if you found somebody's campaign, if you were just, you want to publish something in the OSR space, just publishing some dude's campaign. Hmm. It's very much, you know, to me, and very much an OSR move. <laughs> it's probably got some copyright issues, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, Tim Hutchins uh, has collected some of this stuff and has put out those two books, um, neither of which, uh, Hall of the Stone Giant King and then uh, the one about dolphins. Uh, hmm. And it's basically just, uh, they're, they're reprinted. Uh, the, the, stone, the Stone Giant King is, is like legit. Um, 70s and 80s era like fan made stuff that he found uh and and published and they're great because like they, they have all of the 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 crude sort of like that amateur art and like like they're they're terrible looking designs but like they have all the heart and soul that like 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 you want to see in that stuff uh and it, th that's a great book uh and there must be some mechanism a way of doing it uh or he wouldn't have done it so Right. I mean, they m might have found the person or yeah. the family and asked, like, hey, could, can I use this? And he's like, what, that shit I wrote, like, 30 <laughs> years ago? I don't care. Like, <laughs> and, you know, that's, yeah, there, there, you would have to do a little research. But just, like, to me, that just even, like, taking pictures of people's character sheets, like, I would love to watch. I would love to see that on Instagram. That's the kind of stuff I want to see is weird esoteric stuff. Yeah. And it just is not rewarded by, you know, so you have to kind of find it some other way, it, you know, whether it's a, some kind of a, a book about it, you know, like I, I get it. Like it's sort of hard to publish anything nowadays that, that isn't going to peak on some kind of somebody's algorithm. So, yeah. So I mean, related to my weird, uh, collecting autobiographical collecting habits uh amongst weird esoterica like i also do collect my own like crap from over the years i have my first D, &D character in a <laughs> box over here from like 1992 like so that's kind of another weird thing you can collect as your own like autobiographical ex esoterica right i have i have a box of that stuff too <laughs> yeah just <laughs> what is it that the indie folks call it like artifacts of play right yeah like, yeah yeah i mean a lot of my characters especially my original characters are shoved in these books so when they you know when when if they don't go on the viking funeral pyre <laughs> as i requested in my in my will uh then they get you know 
they will get sold to someone else, hopefully, and not just thrown in a dumpster. I will, you know, I will have order of precedence. If we cannot have open flames at the time, fine, sell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, you know, that's, that's the, that's the thing that makes these, like, interesting artifacts like I, so like i kind of go between it's an interesting artifact of play like the indie guys say and also just weird books like you know i don't really want to get into heartbreakers like that's just eh i don't need a, another copy of dnd <laughs> that someone has reproduced lovingly but changed one thing you know yeah but if it's got something weird about it um, but I'm, I, my stuff is very, mostly very modern. Like I, I had like a giant box of Marvel. Th th okay. So I asked questions of, uh, the patrons. I'm going to get into it. But one of the, the, uh, one of the patrons asked like, what is the thing that you sold and, or didn't buy that got away that you wish you still had? Okay, so complicated answer, but this goes all the way back to my beginnings in the hobby. Um, I had convinced my grandparents uh, to buy me some D&D stuff, but it was uh, random stuff at the mall because I didn't know what I was doing. So I had like all of this D&D stuff and didn't know how to play it or, or do anything with it. And none of my friends were really interested in figuring it out either. Um, but we were getting into comic books at the time. And I went to a local bookstore uh, called Daniel's Den. It was run by this cool little hippie, and they had the Satanic Bible on 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 the shelf, and the, there was like the black light heavy metal posters. It was a really cool shop. Um, and they had the handbooks to the Marvel Universe uh, for the the TSR game, and it, they were loose leaf. And it was four volumes, and it was like a compendium of every freaking character in Marvel comics at that time that I was just getting into. So it was basically like finding like, like the cheat sheet for the entire Marvel universe, uh, snap that up, loved it at the time, used that set of books to kind of figure out how to play role-playing games with my friends. Um, because like it was it, it, who would win in a fight basically. And then, then we kind of extrapolated from there. Uh, I, I, I pitched all of the folders that they came in, put them in a big three ring binder. And then that binder disappeared. And that's, I hate that. That's you know what's funny, and I I don't and, and my answer is almost exactly yours. <laughs> it, it, in the fact that I it, I bought from my local game store, the original game store I used to go to, I bought a banker box full of Marvel superheroes, including three ring binders of all those cards. Ah. Uh! <laughs> And then I sold it. <laughs> so it's possible, unlikely, <laughs> it is possible that I had your collection of Marvel superheroes. Oh my God, that would strike to my heart. <laughs> now, admittedly, this was in Indiana. So the likelihood that it traveled from New Jersey to Indiana and somehow got sold to me is very low, but it is non-zero. <laughs> <laughs> was the binder blue no it was a red okay. binder and it's a right. baseball okay. on the front in sharpie but i spelled it wrong initially <laughs> so it was b-a-c-e and then you could see where I, I i hooked the the s in to correct it it was very stupid um i've since replaced those and i i got them on the cheap and it took a long time to get the the outer folders uh and now i have a nice set and i love them but they aren't the the they aren't my set and and that is definitely like 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 and uh a childhood loss it really does affect me uh in like a weird way <laughs> anyways uh no one has any anything got got away from you as it uh... um, yeah the thing i miss the most is you know it's it's very similar to Stu's story there like um I do not own my original original player's handbook from D and D second edition back in the day. You know, the guy, the crazy helmet on the front. You know that one. <laughs> um, at some point, there was like a, you know, during all that playing, you know, with different groups and so forth in Indiana. 
uh, there was some kind of switcheroo, and I have somebody else's. <laughs> uh, the old switcheroo. I, I have I have a couple of my friends' books. I think I think I have my buddy Brian's DMs yeah. guide. You know, all 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 the books are on the table, right? And some at the end of the night, somebody picks up the wrong one, and I yeah, I do not have the one that was my original. So I, I wish I had that. Uh, and maybe it's out there somewhere. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> I I played D and D so much, but I don't have that kind of that that nostalgia for specific physical copies like like i love planescape but i've replaced my planescape box that's one that i do care about condition because like i keep refining the condition i find like a copy for 50 bucks it's like is it better uh so mine's long gone and i don't i don't i don't feel that same pang that i do for the the marvel superheroes guide for whatever reason yeah i i just it was so much marvel superheroes that i was like i can't i'm never going to use this and of course <laughs> nolan ran a game of Marvel superheroes. I mean, it was online, so I really yeah. Wouldn't. I ran some phase rip, like what, like it was three, like, four months ago. Yeah, yeah it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> um, so I could have used the books instead of the terrible PDF copies that I I was using. Yeah. Um. So that that to me is the the you know eventually I will replace that. Um. But I I will uh, try not to pay a, a lot of money for it. But it has gotten much more expensive than what I paid for it. Yeah, in the early two thousands. <laughs> I feel like I feel like again eBay is to blame. And if if you look around on the Facebook groups, you should be able to buy like big lots of that for not that much. I feel like like it's a game that like when people care about it, like they 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 put it up on eBay, and when they don't care about it, there's like a box of it they don't want to deal with that they're willing to to get rid of. Because I feel like somebody just did that on the verpage discord uh and got like a big pile of stuff that i was jealous about yeah i feel like your discord would be a great place to trade and or talk about it anyways so <laughs> um but hey you know we have a discord too and you can uh come on and come trade your random weird stuff to me and yeah, i will there's the buy sell trade you. channel yeah we do yeah. have that <laughs> so <laughs> I have I have a spreadsheet going at the moment. If anybody's looking for anything, I have 900 items on it. I've sold 77, so it's actually like nine eight fifty ish. But... Right. So this this number. Uh, so Alan Barr, uh, uh, lovely designer Alan Barr, was like, "How many books do you have?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me get the spreadsheet up because I keep track of it in a spreadsheet because I'm not a nerd at all. See, um, I, I just estimate it by linear foot. So I just measured my shelves <laughs> and the piles. And so I have something like 30 foot of, of RPG books. Something I used, <laughs> I, I used to do it by the foot. Um, I ha I definitely had like, like, like something like 90 feet of chaos at one point. That was really funny. But um, I started to get, I, I, I can only keep so much of it in my brain uh, at a time. So I was, I was starting to like accidentally buy things that I already had. Yeah. Uh, so I needed something on, online that i could consult easily um so i have not called out the stuff that i've i've put up for sale uh from the list so uh just know that there's probably i don't know 100 books less than than what this number is but just role-playing books boxes and modules uh i'm still scrolling uh, the number is 2,650 items. Wow. That That's, is very <laughs> impressive. That is impressive. <laughs> uh, that does not include uh, the 646 zines or the... Oh, God. Th 1,307 magazines uh 218 board games 247 game books toys should not be that many 163 <laughs> toys uh uh auxiliary books so like i i th I, I consider like they're not technically all role playing there's just sort of like like my regular books are are just uh it's like fiction that that seems like important or connected to uh role playing and my other pursuits uh that this isn't all my books this is just the books that i feel like are like part of the collection uh is 1170 and then there's also uh 234 pieces of, of ephemera 
LPs and just other miscellaneous collectibles. It's a shit ton of stuff. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, it, uh, it's, it's a lot to even keep track of. Yeah, no, it's, it's a serious. Mm. It sounds like you almost need an access database instead of an Excel spreadsheet. And I push, push my glasses up right now as a nerd. <laughs> Anyways, um, the, z- the zines and uh, magazines and stuff are interesting. I would love to collect some of that stuff because I think some of that stuff is the coolest stuff in the world. But I also feel like that way lies madness. Like if I if I started there, I would never come out of that hole. Right? And there's so much weird, interesting stuff about people talking at the time about what they thought about games and like. It is so cool. And thankfully, like I got almost all the dragon magazines in one go for 50 bucks. Like if I was trying to, and that's sort of the story of all of the different magazines that I've, for the most part, like I just stumble into like somebody getting rid of like a giant box. Otherwise, like it's ridiculous. They, they cost too much. And like condition is actually kind of a problem with magazines, especially dragon magazines. They fall apart. Like nobody's business. Um, but yeah, like different worlds in particular, uh, the Chaosium magazine from the 80s is such a great um, encapsulation of the industry as it was developing during that time. It was just people talking uh, and it's so cool, but uh, like you could get lost for sure. I mean, well, they used to make magazines cheap, right? <laughs> that was that was the point of a magazine was something yeah. you'd read and then throw away. And now there's everything, everything is made at such a much higher quality that it's sort of like you're almost just buying a softback book, you know? Yeah. So it's not quite the same, you know, fun feel of like this something that's, oh, you bought something that's should have been thrown away and now you've got it and you can tear through it and find interesting stuff. So, um, uh okay so i'm gonna do some you know more questions from the patrons here uh what game has surprised you the most and how and why what what thing sticks out in your mind is something that you didn't expect or so forth and so on uh the alien rpg from free league is probably my go-to for this question um because i kind of like the alien franchise uh, as a whole has, has has started so strong and from that that position of strength has has sunk to such lows <laughs> of disappointment for me um that like i just when the 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 role playing game was announced i was just like uh do we really need this like like we're going to we're going to try and parse the lore of prometheus that movie's <laughs> terrible like 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 but that and, and of course that didn't stop me from buying it Right, uh, <laughs> and then I try and and in play that like like in play that game is fantastic. It's it it immediately went from one of the the I thought that it was going to be a complete waste of time to one of my favorite horror role playing game experiences. Uh, it's just so tight and uh, like cinematic. Uh, it it really undercuts claims that railroading is a bad thing in role playing games uh, because it, it railroads in the right ways. Uh, it, it it yeah that 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 game is 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 powerhouse and every 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 single uh supplement that's come out for it has been smart and interesting yeah i i too think that that was like a weird it was like wait what because it seems like it'd be a you know you play basically play the one scenario right yeah but it is the one scenario for the most part but you have choices as the game master and they kind of you know, you're not playing just against the xenomorphs, even though that's what you can do in different scenarios. And yeah, um, I like that we, we play. I played a scenario at Gen Con that was basically ended up ended up with us nuking the site from orbit, and so nice. of course that that's like the best ending. <laughs> <laughs> but then they did it again with Blade Runner, and I was just sort of like, I had the same exact reaction. I was like, oh god, do I really? Like, and I actually like Blade Runner, like in toto more than I like the alien franchise. Cause like there's only two movies and they didn't really screw up either of them. Um, and I was just like, Oh God, they're making that into a game. And then I, I bought it even though I'm sort of lukewarm on it and blade runner. I'm just sort of like, I don't get this one. So, well, so the thing about blade runner that I've sort of figured <laughs> out and I, I bought it as well is that 
I think you need their modules unless you want to do a lot of work yourself. Yeah, because that that is definitely a. There, there's so much. It, it, it there is no campaign option like an alien. It's it, it's all cinematic, right? Yeah. Well, it's a one. It's it's one case is is one box, but there's so much ephemera in mm -hmm. the box that you need to play the scenario. That you to to do that to do that to get up to their level of just the intro adventure, <laughs> yeah. you would have to produce a whole campaign, a whole box yourself. Yeah. And and there's a lot of clues and going back and forth and clues. It's I mean, I think uh other mystery games make it easier, you know, gumshoe and other things make it and uh Brendelwood Bay and other things. But like this is very much like artifacts like here's here's this clue go ahead and look at it you know in that kind of old chaosium box set way but even more just like you've got one case and it's all chunk. yeah um but i haven't got to really play it but that's what i hear and but by examining the artifacts i have in hand i'm like yeah to do my own case because that's what i prefer to do is design my own thing is basically i should just sell it I <laughs> should just do the work and then just sell it. <laughs> um, uh, so last question from uh, Morden Crimson is what game has changed your opinion on most significantly over time, better or worse? Is that still alien? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, probably. I think, well, no. Oh, God, it's got to be Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like, like in the big picture scope of everything, like, like I've changed my mind about Dungeons and Dragons so many times. <laughs> like, I hate it. I love it. You know, I think it's it's great. I I am tired of all the new iterations of it. You know, indie and uh, you know corporate. Like, like, but I still like. I think in it. It's my language in a lot of ways. Like, like, yeah. My my relationship with Dungeons and Dragons is 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 thorny and up and down and. Um, I mean, I don't have anything like profound to say about it. I just think that like, like if I, if I, if I'm really being honest with myself, like I, I love and hate Dungeons and Dragons in equal measure. Uh, and I think that that's the one. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. I'm, I'm of the, of a similar opinion where it's like you, everything is based on it and I want nothing to do with it, but yet I still play it every Friday night. Yeah. So I run, yeah, I run it every week. <laughs> I'm writing a campaign for it. Like I just. Uh. <laughs> well, speaking of D and D, uh, Mike Marines asks. Uh, so, since most of us start in D and D, and if you didn't start on D and D, please mention this. What, what was your second RPG you played? If you didn't start, if you started on D and D. So I, I I I don't I think that my first D and D my first my first D and D <laughs> uh, <a> Freudian <laughs> slip that says so much. <laughs> My I, my first RPG products, as I said, were 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 a smattering of uh, basic and first edition uh, D and D, but I didn't really figure out how to play role playing games until I got Marvel superheroes, uh, and then I think that we did finally put together a D and D game. So like 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 it's it's those two pinging back and forth, uh, were 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 are kind of tied for first, um. Second serious role playing game is probably either Star Wars or Call of Cthulhu. I mean, that's that's all hits. That's all bangers right there. Yeah, no, I I, I was I was lucky in in my you know my 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 history that that the guys at the comic book store were good at guiding purchases, um, and I just and and I think that we just had uh, lucky taste. Uh, everything that we kind of played, we played uh, Pendragon and uh, Tales from the Floating Vagabond and Paranoia and uh nightlife like like we had like a bunch of like like everything that we played was like a good game we we, we never my my high school up through high school we didn't play anything that sucked which was really nice yeah well that that would have been really easy or really hard in at the time because it's for it to filter out you know like when you're just like the you know the heartbreaker games and stuff it's like they weren't published widely so you you'd have to like find them at a convention or like 
know it, the your local guy's shop and you're like oh what is this and they're like oh this is terrible <laughs> yeah don't be so bold rifts existed oh that's right <laughs> I, I, I never I played rifts back in the day <laughs> sorry i i sorry for the rifts lovers out there <laughs> i have I'm to slam sorry. on rifts i'm not sorry no one's but sorry we also played we played uh turtles a little bit that was a fun game uh that's, but rifts... that's got to be the best palladium thing for my month I think, yeah, like easily. <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right. Uh, and, uh, Sardaukar, uh, one, one, two is, uh, what's your favorite FLG in your air in the, uh, New Jersey NY area, you know, that you kind of haunt <laughs> eBay, eBay. Yeah. I like, I don't have a local, um, it, it 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 i like i i might but like i don't know like like they seem to they seem to not survive very long here and i don't know i've just never I, i'm 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 a i'm a hermit i don't go out <laughs> it's easier to just have it shipped fair enough fair enough i've um, never been to a real gaming convention yet i'm going to gen con this year but that that'll be my first oh wow that that's a, that's a heck of a first gaming convention to go to like uh um yeah dive it in feet first yeah <laughs> head and feet first it's a full <laughs> cannonball like just <laughs> uh but uh it's it's a it's an experience and you uh i'm hoping you bring a, an extra suitcase because uh yeah the the while the vendor hall is a uh it's not a mosh pit but it's more of like a slow moving uh, mor morass but it does uh it does contain a lot of weird and interesting things if you start looking in the corners mm. so uh there's also there's also the uh auction oh so, god no i i've heard about the auction i'm not yeah. going to attend the auction uh, <laughs> okay smart man maybe smart it is man. an intervention yeah okay <laughs> no, I, know. I know my limits gentlemen <laughs> good good <laughs> um what is your uh, most uh, favorite or most inspiring RPG cover or marginalia you've seen? What is like the thing, you know, your vast collection? That's a gonna... good one. Ah, oh, there's so many. I've just been I've just been admiring because I've been buying up the Merp stuff. Like I, I laid them all out and they're just a super handsome looking set of covers on those books. But uh the insides don't measure up really. Uh, they're good, but like it's it's a little dry. Um, they just, I mean, like who they the, those covers are just so good. Angus McBride was a fantastic artist, and then they have uh, Daniel Horn on a couple. Um, but the most inspiring, I feel like whatever I say is going to, I'm going to regret it because I'm like I'm going to go have more coffee later and be like, oh no, it's that one. Um, crap you know what it is i know what it is um again this is this might be repetitive for people who are uh familiar with the work but um i got uh i got a uh as a birthday gift in 1985 or 1986 i got the temple of abshai trilogy video game uh and i know and i know it's a video game and not a role playing game but it's still part of the con collection um and I do still have the original, uh, although I have replaced it with a nicer version. Uh, so I have two copies of that. Um, but the cover art for that is sort of the perfect encapsulation of what I think a dungeon looks like. It's like this guy in like a funny helmet, like walking into like a, a sewer slash stone corridor. And there's just so many monsters. And like that, that image more than a lot of Dungeons and Dragons art kind of kept my momentum in the hobby just uh, that game that video game in general was really important for just keeping me interested uh and i, th I think that that would be the like i i changed <laughs> last year or maybe the year before i you know the 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 instagram uh account logo is the the player's handbook idol uh right. and it has been forever and i and i'm just so not like that D and D centric, I felt like that was a little bit of false advertising. So I changed it to the temple of Abshai cover and my engagement vanished. No one saw the account anymore. Oh, and I, 
I don't I don't know if that was like a uh, an art like like a, an algorithm thing or if it was just like people were looking for the 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 idol and they were missing it. But like it I it was like 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 even worse than it is right now. It was like full panic. I was like no one has seen anything, and and then I realized wait I changed the icon and as soon as I changed it back it went back to normal. It's like, Jesus Christ. Well that I mean. That is like when you're scrolling through, like, is this a fake account? Oh, that doesn't look right. I'm going to keep going and trying to, you know. That, yeah. But so, and this this is part of my esoterica is I like to 3D print. So, of course, I can just make random plastic crack. But I have a, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 this actually has real rubies I put in the eyes. Oh, wow. Because the, e the e eBay, you can buy rubies for very cheap. So I painted up. This is my painting of a 3D print, and I have it on my desk at all times. I'm not a huge D&D guy, but I, I dearly love the fact that the, the, the demon has been working out for the last 40 years. <laughs> just, like, ripped. Just utterly ripped demon. Uh, He's and, not going to let anybody else steal his eyes. That's right. That's right. He he got up, got that eye back, and he's like, this is never happening again. <laughs> it's like the Charles Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody kicked sand on him. Yeah, somebody kicked sand in his ruby eyes like never again. And just <laughs> freaking pumped iron for the last 40 years while no one was looking. Uh <laughs> uh, well, since we talked about the Instagram and the your your, your vintage RPG podcast, which I'm fairly certain if you're subscribed to this show, you're subscribed to that show, but just go subscribe to Vintage RPG. It's a fantastic uh taste of the you know every Every cup, every week, every other week, I can't remember. Every week, every Monday, every Monday. Um, would, would is there anything you know now? If you told yourself in 2017, you would change about the way you you've done this in Vintage RPG Land. Um, uh, no, I mean, I think that I would I would caution myself about going all in on. I think I would have started the newsletter earlier. I think that that. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to to do it now. It would have been handy to have that newsletter email list uh, ahead of the book launch um, for the direct marketing potential. But other than that, I, it's been a pretty cool ride. I, I don't have any complaints, really. Everybody's Everybody I've talked to and met has been lovely and interesting and fun. And uh, almost, like, <laughs> I recently was telling somebody that, like, uh, I I've only blocked like, I don't know, 60 people on Instagram. And most of those are ad accounts. And they were just like, how <laughs> like there's so many assholes in this space. How I was like, they don't, they don't asshole at me. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it, everybody's, everybody's chill. It, it, it's always been a, I felt like a, a really warm and, and welcoming hobby. Uh, and yeah, no, I, I have no complaints. I, I wouldn't change a thing. All right. Well, that. uh, those are kind of the patron questions and I'm, I'm glad that I asked them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I agree. You should go, if you have, you started the newsletter already, right? It, it like, no, it like literally I, I, I figured out how to do it yesterday. Okay. Well, the best time to plant a tree is today. So yes, <laughs> or 30 years ago. Um, but yeah, I, uh, thank you very much, Stu, for, ha uh, being on and talking about your, your amazing collection and your, and, our, our our group habit here <laughs> yeah no this was great thanks so much for having me i, I, I had, a, had a blast everyone yes. should buy Stu's book also yes thank you yes plug, uh, plug, plug, plug. <laughs> especially the uh especially the uh the the deluxe version i know it's more money oh, yeah but uh but you're a collector you're gonna want you're gonna want the you're deluxe. Gonna want both no, no but, that, that's a good point <laughs> there, there, there's a few more of the deluxe kicking around at the moment than the uh than the regular edition so uh snap them up Sell them out. Come on. Well, well, I mean, it's monsters, whole aliens, and holes in the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and other, uh, yeah, by Stu Horvath. <laughs> <laughs> and I know there's a subtitle in there, and I'm not going to get there. So, <laughs> uh, a guide to tabletop role playing games from Dungeons and Dragons from Mothership. Perfection. You should have that taped <laughs> on the outside of your monitor at this point. <laughs> it took a long time for me to be able to say it. It's a long title. Uh, it is. <laughs> But yes, uh, pick up a copy, go listen to Vintage RPG. Uh, you know, thank you, Stu. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No problem.
Thank you, Stu and Nolan, for being with me on this early, early morning. Uh, I really had a good conversation, and there was something in there that I'm going to have to go back because I think there's a, I think there's another, maybe not another conversation with Stu, but another episode with a topic he just dropped as a little piece of uh, uh, goodwill in there. So, um. I thank you, uh, patrons, for your support and your questions. Uh, if you'd like to join us, uh, patreon.com slash fullmetalrpg or fullmetalrpg. Uh, there's a Patreon button on there. Oh, and uh, the shirts are going away. Uh, for a new shirt, new shirts are coming uh, soon. I have a lot of things going on, so I will post those after the, some random life events are going to occur. So, thanks once again. Rock.